Okay, so the difference today with the limits, limits still the same idea, right? We're still talking about a limit, same idea. How do we solve them on a graph? How do we solve them in an equation? How do we solve them in a table? That's all the same. Nothing of that's changed. The difference today is you're gonna get all questions where it's not a number. It's approaching what value? Infinity. Yeah, it's either approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. Those aren't numbers. Infinity is not negative infinity, positive infinity, they're not numbers, they're ideas. We don't know what that number is at the end. Like if I kept going on this number line, like as X, so as this guy approaches infinity, if I kept going in that way forever and ever and ever, I keep going forever and ever and ever and ever. We wouldn't get there, right? It's an idea. We kind of know what it's doing, right? As I go this way, are the numbers getting bigger or smaller? Bigger, right? And opposite is here, right? Smaller, right? We know that, but we don't know what's at the end of the, at the rainbow, right? We don't know. It's an idea. So when I say positive infinity, you're thinking as far as we can go. As far, think of the biggest number and keep going, right? Same thing with negative infinity. Go that way, okay? Um, so as I go this way, so as X goes this way, the question is, what is Y doing? That's a limit, right? As I go this way, what is Y doing? That's the question of a limit, right? As X approaches a number, what is Y doing? That's the definition of a limit, right? So it's hard because you can never get out there, right? We can't get out there. You know, if I said, if I said this problem here and I said the limit as X approaches two, you're like, oh, right here. Yeah, you can do that, right? You, you can do that because you, you can see it. But you can't do it if you can't see the numbers. So there's different ways to do them. That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay? Okay, so first thing. I gave you a couple tables here. So use the tables in the graph to find the follow. So the first one, let's do the first one together. The limit as X approaches positive infinity. Okay, so we're going really big for this equation here, okay? So what I did was I plugged in one, and then I plugged in 100, then I plugged in 1,000, then 10,000, then 100,000, then a million. A million is not even close to infinity, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here, right? What I was looking for is, are there any patterns? Is there anything you're noticing? So what do you notice as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger? Y gets to three and it kind of stops, right? So do I have to go any bigger? Can I do, you know, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion? Do I have to do that? No, because I kind of know, hey, it's just doing three, right? So we would say the limit as X approaches infinity here is three. All right. So then I did the other way. I went the other way. Negative infinity, so negative numbers, negative one, negative 100, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, negative 100,000, negative a million, to see the same thing. And I did see a pattern, right? It was leading to three. So the limit on both sides is three. Is it possible for the positive and the negative negative? Yes. Most of the time that'll be the case, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So... What does this guy look like? The last thing I did was draw a picture. Right? So, let's look at this. So as X is getting bigger, what is Y doing? Flattening, right? Yeah, it's staying the same, right? It's kind of flattening out. And where is it flattening out at? Which is why the the, uh, the limit as X approaches infinity for F of X was three. Now look at the other way. What is it doing? It's the same thing, right? It's flattening out at Y equals three. That's why the limit is there, okay? So you guys can kind of see that, right? Problem is, how did, I how did I create the tables? How did I create the graph? I use my calculator. These are non-calculator, this is the non-calculator chapter. So we gotta come up with ways to do the exact same thing I did without looking at a graph, without looking at a table. So how do we do that? That's what we're gonna talk about today. The reason I put these up here first, well, 
floors. Why'd you put these, why'd you put tables and graphs up here if we can't even use those? Because I wanted to give you the idea of what we're doing. This is the idea of what we're doing, right? So how do we do that? Well, in words is here, and then on the back page is a table, which probably be a little more helpful, okay? So in words, often you will be asked to take the limit of a function as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity, right? So when taking the limit to infinity of a rational function, so rational function means it's a fraction, where you have something on top and something on bottom, right? The guy we just looked at was a rational function because it had something on top and something on bottom. Um, P of x and Q of x are polynomials. It means they have whole number powers, whole number powers, okay? Um, so this is the way, this is in plain English. Sometimes it's, sometimes plain English doesn't sound like plain English. And this is one of the reasons why. And that's why we're gonna do it on the backside, make it a little more simple. If the degree of P, okay, so stop right there. What is degree? Not like degrees outside or not the temperature wise, but in math, does anyone remember what a degree is? Not an angle, power, right? It's the power, the biggest power, the biggest power. So for example, what's the degree on top? Two. Two. What's the degree on bottom? So they have the same degree, right? That's what they're talking about with degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the degree of the top guy is bigger than the degree of the bottom guy, then the answer is either gonna be positive or negative infinity, depending on the signs of the leading coefficients. Okay, we call that top heavy. If it's top heavy, meaning the degree, the power on top is bigger than the power on bottom, we call it top heavy. And the limit is either going to be positive or negative infinity. That's what the limit will be equal to. Okay. Second bullet point. If the degree of P and Q are equal, same, right? The limit is the leading coefficient of P divided by the leading coefficient of Q. So we call this one equally balanced. Equally balanced. This is what we saw in the, an example earlier, right? Two was on top, two was on bottom. So let's go back up to that one to prove this one. Okay. What's coefficient? The number that multiplied in the yeah, the number that's being multiplied in front, right? So you said the degrees were two, right? We said degrees were two on top and two on bottom. Okay, so who, what's the coefficient of the three, three right? What's the coefficient over here? What's three divided by one? That's, a, that's another way to get three. That's the way we're gonna use because you don't need a calculator, you don't need a graph, you don't need a table for that, okay? That's when it's equally balanced. Last one, last bullet point. If the degree of P, so the top has a smaller, that's when it's easy. It's just zero, the limit's always zero. So this, one it's, this is when it's not top heavy, it's when it's bottom heavy. I'll give you some examples on the other side. I'll give you some more examples on the other side. The limit is zero. So if the degree on bottom is bigger than the degree on top, the answer is always zero. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the back. The back has a table. The table is exactly this, just with examples. We're gonna fill it out with examples. Okay. So if it's still not quite clear, that's what the table's for. Tables will help us with that. One thing they're gonna be asking you is not, we did vertical asymptotes last week, right? They're gonna be asking you for horizontal asymptotes. Well, guess what? Finding the limit as X approaches infinity and finding the limit as X approaches negative infinity, what we're doing today is another way of finding the horizontal asymptotes, right? I'll show you, I'll give you an example. You don't have to turn your page back over, but let's. 
We said the limit to infinity and the limit to negative infinity for this guy was what number? Three, three right? The limit is three because it approaches three. Well, let me go make that line here. It's like a wall, yeah. Isn't a wall something you can't cross? Isn't that an asymptote? It's just going the other way, right? It's going the other way. It's not vertical like it was last week. It's horizontal. So that's what it also creates, okay? If that number is the same. In this case, it was the same on the left side as it was the right side, so, the num so that's, it's going to be also the, vertical as the horizontal asymptote. So sometimes they'll do that. Sometimes they'll say, to kind of trick you, they'll give you a function and say, what's the horizontal asymptote? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Just find the limit. Just find the limit on either side. And you're done. And that's, if it's the same number, if it's the same number on both sides, approaching the same as positive infinity, negative infinity, boom, that's your horizontal asymptote. Y equals whatever. If they're not the same, then there, are, there is no horizontal asymptote. Mm -hmm. that'll, be, that'll, that'll be a case too. Okay? So yeah, they have to be the same for them to have a horizontal asymptote. If they don't, they don't have, there's no horizontal asymptote present. Okay. Okay. So let's make a table. So the table is just exactly like this part here. It's just as a table, we're going to put some examples. Okay. Okay. So what happens if the degree of the numerator is larger? The degree on top, numerators on top, right? So that's top heavy, right? So let's write this down. This is top heavy. Just right here. This is an example of top heavy. What did we say the limit was if it's top heavy? There you go. It's either positive or negative infinity. If this is the case, it's not going to have a horizontal asymptote. It's not going to have one. So if this is the case, it's not going to have a horizontal asymptote. So let me give you an example of one. X x to the third plus 2x over 2x squared minus 5. So what is the degree on top? 3. Three. What is the degree on bottom? Three. Top heavy, right? So if it's top heavy, this guy will have a limit as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity. Which one is it? I'll show you that when we start doing examples. Okay, it's either going to have a limit at one or the other, positive infinity or negative infinity, and there's going to be no horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Degree of the denominator is larger, so bottom heavy, right? Bottom heavy. We said if it's bottom heavy, what is the limit always equal to? Zero. Zero. Bottom heavy. If it's a bottom heavy situation, the horizontal asymptote will only be at y equals zero. That's it. It'll only be at y equals zero. There won't be any others. It'll just be 1 at y equals 0. So let me give you an example. 2x squared minus 5 on top. Oops. And then on bottom, x cubed plus 2x. So the degree on top is 2, the degree on bottom is 3, it's bottom heavy, so the limit, if they were asking us the limit, 
it'd be zero. And if they were asking us for a horizontal, where is the horizontal asymptote? There's going to be one at y equals zero. Okay. The last one, the last one is the one you probably see the most often. It's when the degrees are the same. So we, we say this one is equally distributed. Equally, let me put it in red. Distributed. So how do we find the limit? The, we're going to find the limit the same way we're going to find the asymptotes, right? We're going to create a fraction or a ratio of the leading coefficients like we did on the front. We're going to create a fraction or a ratio of the leading coefficients. So let me give you an example. Another example, because you guys have seen one on the front. So let's say this. I'm going to give you and try to trick you a little bit. So 3 minus x squared over 5x squared plus 2x. So I'll admit it. I'm trying to trick you a little bit. See if, see if it works. So, that, so here we go. Some people say diff, I get different answers for this one. Here's how you do it. What's the degree on top? Two. What is the coefficient of that guy? One. Negative 1, right? Negative 1 right here. Negative 1. What's the degree on bottom? Two. Two. What's, the what's the coefficient for that guy? Positive five. Positive five. That's the only two I care about. This guy and this guy. The three and the positive two x, I could care less about. So order sometimes doesn't matter. It's the one that's the biggest. Sometimes the biggest guy comes second. So the limit as x approaches um, infinity for this guy will be negative one-fifth. Same thing with the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one-fifth. Those are both going to be the same. Okay. All right. That's what we're looking for. Pretty much on this, that's what we're looking for. But there's going to be different equation, different functions, right? We're trying to look for which is, we're trying to look for growing. Which one's growing faster, right? On a top heavy, the top is growing faster. If you cube something, it's going to grow faster than if you were to square it. If you kept cubing it, right? Squaring it, it would get bigger pretty fast, but not as fast, right? Bottom heavy, it would be the opposite. The bottom is getting bigger faster because it's cubed versus squared. Equally distributed, they're growing at the same rate. They're growing at the same rate, okay? So over here to the right, I have a little cheat sheet. Growth rates, growth rates. Which grow faster? Which functions grow faster? First one is factorial. You don't have to worry about factorial in this class. We do it in statistics a little bit. Factorial, you've probably seen it. Like factorials, like if you have six with an exclamation point. Has anyone seen that? Exclamation points. What is, do you guys know what it means? Close. It's six times five times everything till you get down to, not zero, because they would cancel each other out until one. Yeah, you don't even need to do one, yeah. Just down to two. Every whole number, right? That's what factorial is. We do that in statistics a little bit, but not in this class. You won't ever see a factorial. Yeah, so if you see that button on your calculator, the exclamation point, that's what it means, okay? 
So for this class, for the sake of this class, we'll just catch, cross this one out because you won't ever see a factorial. Those grow the fastest because they're all multiplication. Think about 100 factorial, how big that's going to be, right? Yeah. Okay, so the ones that grow second to factorials. So the, for our class, the ones that grow biggest are exponentials. Anything that grows exponentially grows extremely fast, right? Think of diseases. Think of populations, right? Diseases spread very fast. Populations grow very fast or the decay fast, depending on what the birth rate is, right? Right now, I just was reading, we're entering a stage where our birth rate's going down. Our death rate is higher than our birth rate. Globally or just U.S.? Globally, too, in the U.S. and globally. So that means we're losing more people every day than we are gaining them. More people are dying on average every day in the United States than are actually being born. So there, there's, there's good and bad to both. There's good and bad to both, right? That's more of an economics thing where what's... So less people means less stress on the government, right? The government has to do less. More resources, more resources for everyone else. But what else happens when there's less people? Exactly. There's less people working, right, to produce those things, right? So as Mr. Flores retires in hopefully less than 20 years, 15 to 20 years, right, I go off to retirement, you guys are still in the workforce, right? Well, there has to be someone to take my position when I leave, right? And if there's more people dying than living, than being born, there might not be someone to take my position, right? Dep that, it doesn't matter what I do. It could be a teacher. It could be someone that works at a store, or works at a factory, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, right? Well, we don't need more lawyers, but, um, but you know what I mean, right? There has to be someone to take that spot. So that's, that's, another, that's another issue. So, I mean... Yeah, yeah, that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, young people do die, but, you know, you almost, it's rare. It's like if you saw the statistics on that, it would be extremely rare. But like people in their 80s and 90s and even 70s who don't take, well, take care of each other, the chances of them passing, right, go higher. My parents are in their 70s now. Every year it kind of gets, you know, but that's things like that. Things like that you have to worry about. Big, um, that's, like I said, that's more of a macroeconomics thing. You know, what's the effects of that, you know? Um, the second one is polynomials. Polynomials are quadratics, cubics, linear, right? Linear, quadratics, cubics, those three. Any, to the fourth power, to the fifth power, to the sixth power, anything like that. Anything with a, with a positive whole number power. Okay. Mm -hmm. What makes those bigger than exponential? That's a great question. That's a great question. So, wait, wait. I mean, smaller. Oh, so what makes them small? Well, because over time, exponentials spike higher. So what's an ex? What's the diff? This one, like, because x squared and x cubed have exponent have exponents, right? The third. Why are they not exponentials? Because exponentials are when x is the power. Oh, it's because it keeps keep growing. Yeah, so, like 10, 100, so pick a number. Pick a number, 2, 4, 8, 10, a million. It plugs it in there, right? Pick that same number, and now it's the power, right? It's going to grow faster. These guys, no doubt, will grow, no doubt but not nearly as fast as if I make it a power, right? So, um, yeah, that's why. That's why exponentials grow faster. That's why polynomials are second on, are next on the list because they grow fast, okay? Next thing is logs, anything log related. Anytime you see a log, this picture in your head. This picture in your head. Is it growing? Yeah, yeah but slowly, right, slowly. It's not growing nearly as fast, but it's growing, right? They grow pretty slow. Sine and cosine, sine and cosine. Yeah, they oscillate. It goes up, but then it comes down. And then it goes up, then it comes down. And it goes up and it oscillates, right? So it's not, it is increasing, but it just kind of stays where it's at, 
right? It's not gonna, it's not gonna go up, 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 up. It's kind of like quadratics. Quadratics grow. If you look at quadratics, that guy's growing, but it's also got a negative, right? It's got growth. And I feel like most of the time they have asymptotes from like the top and the bottom, and so they can never get higher than like a y and five. They're limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're limited, very, definitely. And the last one is constants. What are constants? You got a picture of one on the bottom right. One. Yeah, it doesn't grow, right? Stays constant. So it's just a number, y equals two, y equals one, y equals whatever. That's just stay, it doesn't grow. That's why it's at the bottom of the list, because it never grows. Okay? So a lot of these, if you have a picture in your head and you know which one it falls under, you can do it that way too. Okay? All right, so now let's do some examples. Let's do some examples. We're not going to finish the notes today. We'll finish them tomorrow, but I want to do some examples first. Like the difference between positive infinity and negative infinity. Sometimes there's a little difference there. All right, so here we go. We find the limit as x approaches infinity. 4, 5 minus 2 over x squared. So before we do any math, Right before we do any, before we can actually use our table, I got to simplify this guy a little bit. So I'm going to actually subtract them. There's another way to do it, which I'll show you next week. But for right now, I'll show you this way. Okay. So if we're combining fractions by subtracting them, we need a common denominator, right? So what's the common denominator going to be for this guy? Negative x squared. Uh, just x squared. Yeah, just x squared. Because once I put an x squared there, that's the common denominator, x squared, right? So let me rewrite this problem. The limit as x approaches infinity. So I get 5x squared minus 2 on top, right? And then I get x squared on the bottom, right? Because that was the 5x squared, take away 2, and then the, the denominator is both x squared, right? Now, let's look at this guy. Top heavy, bottom heavy, equally distributed. Equally. equally distributed, right? They both have an x squared as their top. So this is the guy I care about. The minus two is irrelevant to me for this problem. So it would be five over one, right? Which is five. Okay. All right, let's look at B now. Three over e to the x. So the top is what? A constant, right? It's always three. The bottom falls into which of those categories on the right? Logarithmic. Not logarithmic. It doesn't have the word log. If it did, it would have the word log. You're close, though. Exponential. Where is the variable? Up top. Anytime the variable's up top, that's, that's exponential. So what grows faster, a constant or an exponential? Well, a lot faster, right? The top's not even going to grow, right? So is it top heavy, bottom heavy, or equally distributed? Bottom heavy. Extremely bottom heavy. So if it's bottom heavy, what's the limit going to be? Let's see. Bottom heavy, the limit is zero. Yep. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The limit as x approaches infinity, sine of x over x. So the top, what type of function is the top? Sine, sine cosine, right? It's trig, right? So we got that one. The bottom, which of those is it following to? Not a constant, because it's x. X is a variable. Linear? It would be it would be it would be linear, right? It would be linear, which also follows under the polynomial. Polynomial. 
So the top is sine, right? The bottom is a poly. So it's bottom. So it'd be bottom heavy, yeah. Which equals zero. Which equals zero. Yeah. The top is just going to be either it's going to be negative one or positive one or something in between. Yeah, that's very limited, right? The bottom can be as big as you want it to be. So it's going to get bigger faster. So D, what's the difference between D and the ones we've done? Well, even before that. It's negative infinity. It's negative infinity. So now we're going the other way. So instead of, going, instead of X going to the right as far as we can, we're going to go to the left as far as we can. That's going to change a couple things. It's going to change a couple things. The first thing is bottom heavy, top heavy, equally distributed? Which one is it going to be? Don't worry about the negative right now. What is it going to be? Top heavy, right? Okay. It's top heavy, right? So if this guy was a positive, we would say... Yeah, not even, we, don't, we don't have to worry about a, a horizontal... Yeah, it'd have no horizontal acid bit, but what would the limit be? One. Oh, positive or negative infinity? So if this was positive infinity, the limit would be infinity. What would be the what would be the limit? It would be positive infinity. So positive infinity, you're right. What about negative? This is where you gotta kinda do mental math, right? So for years and years and years, right? You've had to write down everything. And you know, your teacher's like, I wanna see your work, I wanna see your work. Now in this class, there's a lot of conceptual stuff that you can work out in your head. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so top is gonna to grow faster, right? Top is gonna go faster, it's top heavy. So we know the limit has to be either positive infinity or negative infinity, right? Which one is it gonna be? Which one is it gonna be? Well, let's picture in our head. If I was to plug in a negative number, think of the biggest negative number you can think of in your head. And I was to plug it in on top. It, it would turn positive, right? And times three, which would be a positive, right? Okay, so it'd be a positive on top. Now that same number, what if I plugged it into the bottom? It'd be a negative, right? It would be a negative. What is a positive divided by a negative? So it would be negative infinity. And if there was like a negative on the bottom, then it would probably be positive. If this guy was a negative x, then it would have been, then it would change this to positive, right? Which would be positive. Yeah. So some people, I get the question, well, what happens about the plus x? Why do we not care about the plus x and the minus 1? What happens there? Well, you got to think. These are the big dogs. They're driving the bus because they're the ones that are gonna determine how big or how small it is, right? If I square it, this guy's gonna get bigger or smaller, but not nearly like this. It's, these guys are the ones that are gonna, or be the ones that decide where this is going, right? Think of the smallest number you can think of all the way, negative a billion, and then I subtract one. Is that gonna do anything to it? No, exactly. Is there a difference between a billion dollars and a billion dollars in one, I'd take a billion dollars. I'd be okay with that, right? There's, if you throw in a dollar after that, there's, that doesn't really do anything, right? Okay? That's why. That's why we don't care about those guys. We just care about the degrees. All right. Okay, let's start over. Let's get some roots over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Top heavy, bottom heavy, equally distributed. This one's kind of a trick. I'll, I'll let you know what the, I'll let you know from the beginning. It's kind of a trick. So I'm not saying you're going to be wrong. I'm just saying think about it before you answer. It's actually equally distributed. Why, Macy? Why is it equally distributed? Yeah, because you have to take the root, right? We only focus on the big dogs, the big the big guys. On top, that's x. On bottom, that's the square root of x squared, right? The positive 4, I could care less about. 
Well, the top is x to the first power, right? If you square root as x squared, aren't you also going to get x? So you're losing its power. So it's losing its power, yeah. It's losing its power. So it's x over x. That's equally distributed. So the top is a polynomial. Mm-hmm. And after I square root this, the bottom one, it's going to also be a polynomial. So it's equally distributed. Okay. So when we're doing limits for equally distributed, how do we do it? Make a fraction, right? Fraction of the leading coefficients. So the top has a coefficient of what? One. The bottom has a coefficient of what? One. So we get one. Sometimes they're a little tricky like that. Sometimes they'll do roots or cube roots or something like that. You know, but you know what you, you, again, we don't care about everything else. We just care about the, the guy, the, the bus drivers, the guys who drive in this whole thing. Okay. Let's look at F. Equal. So F is equally distributed, right? So the first thing I like to do, especially if they don't give it to me in order, they do this because they want to see if you're paying attention. Right? No roots, equally distributed. So we would make a fraction of the top and the bottom. Not yet. We're going to do that, but not yet. The reason is because we have another negative infinity problem, right? So I'm plugging in, you can't automatically, yeah, it's hard. Sometimes you automatically assume, oh, I'm just plugging in positive numbers. No, this one's negative. So if I was to plug in a negative number, biggest negative number you can think of, would cube change its sign? Um, yeah. So it would go back to a negative, right? Negative negative. And then a negative times negative 3 positive. would change it to a positive, right? So the top is going to be positive. If I were to cube the bottom, it would be a negative number still, right? And then times positive 2 would change it, would keep it as a negative, right? So our answer is going to be Please. negative, right? Negative. And then negative what? 3 over 2, yeah. Okay. So that's the little caveat. When it's a negative infinity, you got to kind of pause a little bit. When it's positive infinity, go right to your table. Is it top heavy, bottom heavy, equally distributed? Do your thing, All right? But when when it's um, when the um, the negative infinity comes out, you got to kind of pause a little bit, okay? And you got to kind of think about it's called number theory. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? That's what it's called. Okay, so let's go to G now. So is it top heavy or bottom heavy? The answer is I don't know yet because there's some simplifying I need to do, right? The top I need to distribute. With distributive property for this one, I could care less about everything. I just want to know the big guy. So the big guy is going to be 12x squared on top, right? I want to put equals. Let's move it this way. So the top big guy is going to be 12x squared. How am I going to multiply the bottom? Multiply the big guy times the big guy, right? Multiply the big guy times the big guy. It would be my outer, right? Outer, first outer, inner last. It would be the outer one gives me the big guy, right? So I get 8. X to the 6th power. X to the, not 6th, it would be 5th power. Because I have 3 over here, 2 over here, put them together, I make 5. If it was like this, That would be sixth power. That would, then you'd multiply. That's the difference. So when you're multiplying, you add powers. Yeah. Now, what about the rest? I don't care because I just want the big, I, don't, I just want the 
the, um, the degrees. That's all I care. That's all I care about, the degrees. So now that I have that, bop, pop, top heavy, bottom heavy, equally distributed. Bottom. bottom heavy. And when it's bottom heavy, what did we say that our limit was going to be? Zero. zero. Always zero if it's bottom heavy. Look at this guy. Okay. So I can already tell who the top dogs are going to be, right? It's going to be positive 7x to the fourth, right? And 64x to the sixth, right? Those are going to be the top dogs. But the top, the top is underneath a root, right? So it's going to give up, it's, it's, it's going to give up not two of its powers. No. So if you square root x to the sixth. So first of all, what's the square root of 64? Eight. So it's going to be eight. How many powers of x are going to be left? Let's see. So I have six x's, right? Two, four, six, too many. Square roots, you're looking for pairs, right? How many pairs do I have? It's going to be x to the third, yeah. x to the third. So when after I do that, it becomes bottom heavy, right? Bottom heavy means zero. Okay. Let's do, let's see, let's try to get one done, and if we get two done, great, and then we'll finish the rest tomorrow. So this one, the directions change a little bit. It says, find the limit and any horizontal asymptotes. So we have to also take that into account, right? Okay, so here we go. It's going to be bottom heavy, right? It's going to be bottom heavy. Right? So when it's bottom heavy, our directions say for the limit, for the limit when it's bottom heavy is zero. The limit is zero. What about for a horizontal asymptote? Also zero, y equals zero. Okay. Letter B. Top heavy, bottom heavy, equally distributed. Is it to X approaches positive infinity or negative infinity? Positive, so I don't have to pause, you can just go. So what is the limit gonna be? Two, two over one or two, right? Good. And then horizontal asymptote at Y equals same value. Is it always the same? Mm -hmm. When it's equally distributed, it's always going to be the same. Horizontal asymptote and the limit are going to be at the same spot. Same for the bottom and the bottom. Yeah, if it's equally distributed, bottom is zero and zero, yeah. There you go. If it's top heavy, it's going to be a little bit different. It'll be either positive infinity, negative infinity, and no horizontal asymptote. Yeah, the only time we're going to have no horizontal asymptote is when it's top heavy. Also, by giving that question, the bottom yeah. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's see. The rest I will give, we'll do tomorrow, and then I'll give you a few more, and then maybe Wednesday we'll do our practice. Okay, I want to give you some more examples after that. Okay, so we'll stop there for today, but essentially the same idea. I'm not changing any rules tomorrow. 